we're doing today. Awesome. Good. How are you, Frosty? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for giving me a whole bunch of time. Of Let's get started real quick. Uh, what's harder to manage, uh, a movie on this scale or a Chevy Chase? Ah, Chevy <laughs> Chase. Definitely. It's a no-brainer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so basically, some, some of the stories we've all heard could be true. Could be. Vaguely yeah. true. I understand. They're that. true. So yeah. now that you've reached this pinnacle of big budget, you know, Hollywood movies, uh, are we, are, are you, are, has uh, community fans lost you to the community movie? Or is this something that you would squeeze in if it ever came together? We would always squeeze that in. I mean, the show, yeah, the show's a great passion of ours. So, um, and we love the cast, yeah. we get along so well with all of them. So we'll see if it ever happens. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't know, I, I think the time might have come and gone for the movie, but nowadays with everything coming back, you know, and uh, Wet Hot American Summer, like all, you look at all this stuff, I mean, five years from now, they could still make the True. movie. True, yeah. yeah. You know? Uh, community back to school. Exactly. Uh, Chevy Chase is dead. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, how did you sell Feige on getting Winter Soldier? What did, what did you do to, when you met with Marvel and Feige and been like, we're the guys? We can do this. Well, we have, you know, we're very passionate about uh, our pitch. We're passionate about the character. I've been collecting comics since I was a kid. Very similar upbringings to Kevin. We're comic book obsessed. We're pop culture obsessed. We have a lot of the same reference points. So very similar personality types. Um, uh, and uh, but it was and a very long process. It, it was a very you know, long. It was not it, easy. Yeah, it was. A t we we went through a series of four meetings with Marvel over the course of about two <clears> months. <throat> where we kept getting more and more specific about our, what our vision was for the Reference movie. videos, storyboards, script pages, you name it. Um, you know, we did like a 30-page book that had, you know, uh, everything that we would do with the character from the theme of the movie to the tone of the film to the fighting style to, you know, what, what we liked about his character and what we didn't like about his character because, frankly, he, wasn't, he was not one of my favorite characters growing up. I always found him a little square. Uh, so it was, uh, you know, we wanted to add a, an element of, uh, of deconstruction to the character and, and to, um, uh, to, to, uh, to examine him in a way that, uh, uh, that was different uh, than the microscope Joe had used on the character uh, because his was an homage to the Golden Age and what we wanted to do was to modernize uh, Cap and to make him really flawed and human. But it was as flawed know, and human as we could. Yeah, it was, it, was, it, was, it was a tough process, but we fell in love with the material. We fell in love with the project. We really wanted it. So basically, it took over our lives for two months. We were doing almost nothing but developing the movie before we had the job. But the good news was we figured the movie out before we got hired, which was very cool. Um, but I remember my wife likes to remind me toward the end of the process before we got the job, she said, I remember you said to me, she goes, you know, I'm gonna have to re-examine my entire career if we don't get this job, because it just it just felt like that we felt like we were meant to do the movie, and and Joe and I were very excited about it. Uh, I think a lot of people are curious about the way Marvel works in terms of uh, the development process of a movie in the MCU. Um, does when you're making a movie like with Winter Soldier or with Civil War or with the upcoming Avengers films? Does Feige and Marvel, like, how does that relationship work in terms of handing you what they'd like versus the directors sort of crafting, you know what I mean? What's that balance like? Frankly, our experience has been that it's pretty wide open. Uh, Winter Soldier, uh, they knew they wanted to make a political thriller, but the interpretation of the character was wide open, the story events. Um, there, there was actually a very good script from Marcus and McFeely, but we went in after we got the job and did a bunch of work on the script with them, uh, brought in different characters, you know, really, Really, really worked to to interpret it in the way that we wanted to interpret it. Civil War was uh, was a wide open playing field. I mean, it was really just, you know, something that came up casually in conversations because we're all comic book fans, and you know, what are the ambitious things we could do if we return to do a, a, you know, the third Captain America movie? And once we settled on the concept, you know, I think just because, you know, we've done so many movies there now, we're about to do four films for them, and, and we've worked with Marcus and McFeely, who've done more movies than we've done with them, that we're a little bit of a sub-studio where, you know, it's, it's easy for us as a, as a group uh, to, uh, to come up with conceptually what we want to do. Uh, and then we will ask questions about whether this would interfere with a storyline in another movie or what's going on in that film, can we pull some of it into this film? 
And, that, and that's when you start looking for the interconnectedness, but it's very important early on that the, um, that the concept uh, um, be created in a bubble because you have to pr protect the idea. It has to be driven by storytelling. Kevin's very good about just attacking each movie as they come and then figuring out what the movies are after that. Because if you get ahead of yourself, two things can happen. One is you take your eye off the ball uh, uh, and, uh, and, and you, you make a mess of a movie. And uh, the second thing that would happen is then you don't get to make any more movies. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, he's always in the mindset of let's just make this movie now and then we'll worry about the next movie when it comes. I mean, the most, the most simple way I could put it is Marvel doesn't come to the filmmakers and say, here's what the next movie is. They come to the filmmakers and say, what is the next movie? That's very much the process.